a Big Spark Studios original. It's like AS. Oh, sh. Oh, well, it is what it is. Hey, everybody, welcome back to Unhinged with Chris Clemens, the podcast that I am, quite frankly, over caffeinated for, which explains the the, the fog machine we have today. Um, now, if you want to, before we get into the episode, make sure you subscribe to Unhinged with Chris Clemens, wherever you listen to podcasts. And if you want to watch this colossal shit show unfold, is it? unfolds i don't know go to youtube.com slash chris video episodes are always there when the podcast comes out and also make sure to leave a review on apple music Uh, this is too much talking i'm so sorry for burdening you all um it is august 25th and what's been going on oh my gosh yesterday (laughs) i'm gonna share something here oh fuck but if he ends up looking at my channel hmm I had my first tennis lesson yesterday after probably like a decade of not playing tennis. And this sounds not exciting to anybody, but like it is so (laughs) fucking thrilling to me. First of all, I was supposed to have an 8 a.m. lesson. And um, if you're my instructor and you're watching this or listening, skip a little. Okay. So I had an 8 a.m. lesson and I set alarms and I was like, why the fuck are my alarms going off so early today? So I slept through them. Got a call at 8.09 from my tennis instructor. I was like, oh, fuck, that's why. My Nine minutes after my, I almost said appointment, my lesson started and I was like, oh, shit. Okay. Uh, so I grabbed the phone. I'm like, hey, oh, my God, I'm so sorry I meant to call you. My dog has been vomiting for out. Like, it is just... A nightmare. Um, do you have any avail? Like, anyway, so I ended up having a 9 a.m. A point? No. Lesson. Uh, yeah. I just started feeling the smoke cloud before that we all saw. Anyways, I'm taking tennis. I am so wildly sore. And honestly, it was so much better than I thought it was going to be. I thought it was going to be straight up from ground zero. Like, rebuilding everything that I accomplished. But nope. It was... I don't know. I'm... I'm like excited. I'm so fucking excited. I love my tennis instructor. Um, what else? Oh, I made a mold of my feet yesterday. I feel like I had something important to talk about. Milk crates. Milk crates? What is that? The milk crate challenge. What is the fucking <laughs> milk crate challenge? I see this and it's been too m- long where I'm like, I can't ask now. Because like one, what like what if it's offensive? Hmm, I don't know if it's offensive. I know this some so some dude in Jersey. Stack. Is it just a challenge? Yeah, yeah. Oh, it's, it's stacked up like a pyramid. Yeah, it's stacked like a pyramid. Okay, so if you don't know, there's this meme thing yeah. going challenge. Yeah, yeah. challenge. Yeah, yeah. It's like the cinnamon challenge, but like so much more complicated. You make a pyramid of milk crates, like those plastic ones, and you've got to just walk to the top and then down the other side. Yeah, exactly. That's it. <laughs> Sometimes it's so for, it's just that stupid. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes got it's it. for for cash. Most times it's for glory. Oh my god! Wait, oh my guys, god. if I knew this was <laughs> cash or glory, <laughs> I'll take a glory hole. No, I'm oh, <laughs> I re- oh. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I would definitely take cash. Who are we kidding? Wait, why aren't we doing that today for the podcast? So we're gonna set that up for next episode. Can we? Oh. No. <laughs> Sam says no. Why? You'll get hurt. I'll get hurt. You know what? I've been hurt many times. At this point, I feel fucking nothing. I would love to feel something, even if it is hurt. We could st- we could put a bunch of pillows around. I don't need that. I ha- I'm the middle kid of two brothers. I like I, any bones that are broken have already been broken, and it's only my pinky toe and pinky finger. So <laughs> it's just right on topic. Um, can we do that though? We'll talk off camera, and not when we're in the middle of literally recording. But okay, so it's just. It's just a challenge to... S- okay, wow. I feel like we've covered enough. Um, now it is time for the free-for-all. I live for that. I know people are probably shitting themselves, but it's... You know what? It's about time. Wait, this can't be here. Who let this happen? Anyways, I was going to make a solid joke that it's finally time that y'all are shitting your pants and not me. Um, okay, so if you're new here, the free-for-all is where we just compile a bunch of stories, news, 
It really could be anything. Hence the name Free For All. And we get more in touch with the world around us, no matter how big or small. Some of these, I think, might be a nice mix. Um, First up, we have health officials warn people not to treat COVID with drug meant for livestock. New York Times. Okay, wow. So in this edition of... America is out america at itself. Um, ivermectin, an anti-parasitic drug commonly used for livestock, should not be taken to treat or prevent COVID-19, the FDA said on Saturday. <sighs> Listen, I'm not bragging about my IQ, and I never will be that bitch. No shit. Are you kidding me? Where First, where do you even find this? It's not like you go into fucking Walgreens and you're like, hi, one Ivermectin, please. I, can you? No, I... Ugh, nobody's talking. Fuck y'all. <laughs> the warning came a day after the Mississippi State Department of Health issued a similar statement in response to reports that an increasing number of people in Mississippi were using the drug... Dare I say survival of the fittest. I'm... Stop talking, Chris. Just keep reading the words in front of you that New York Times put out. Some studies last year spurred use of the drug against COVID-19, especially in Latin America, and Fox News has promoted some of these studies. Why do we care about what Fox News is airing? One day it's like, don't use Livermectin, and then the next day they're like, use it. Stick it up your fucking asshole. In Mississippi, where only 30%... I don't care about this story. This seems like a no shit, and if you are doing this... (sighs) Right? Am I wrong for feeling exhausted by this? Is that insensitive? This is deranged. Like, we are at the point. Like, that's the thing. I don't consider myself a smart person. Like, I don't. And I know my mom is, if she ever fucking watches this, she's going to be like, Chris, you are a smart individual. You, Shut up, mom. What the fuck? Ugh! God, people, people will take fucking shit for livestock, but not get the vaccine. Like, what? <sighs> Anyways, on to a much lighter note. Buy my house, but I'm taking the toilet. And this is also from the New York Times. I, you know, anything involving a toilet, I'm all in. In this seller's market, some sellers are exercising their power with unusual demands and stripping their homes of fixtures and appliances as they leave. And as they should. Toilets, particularly expensive self-cleaning ones with bidets, are among the hot items ending up on moving vans as sellers flex their muscle to squeeze the most out of a sale. Some examples are an agent recently informed some clients the buyers of a $15.5 million apartment in the Carlton house on East 61st Street would take their kitchen cabinets, all of them. You'd think if you're buying a $15.5 million home, you would just get new ones or better yet. Pay to get replicas. You clearly have the money. In the East Ham- or in East Hampton, the sellers of a $2.2 million house decided they wanted to keep a pair of fruit trees, even though removing them left two gaping holes by the swimming pool. That sounds like the most East Hampton sense I've ever fucking heard. During the negotiations for a two-bedroom co-op in Diker Heights, Brooklyn, the seller insisted on keeping the kitchen appliances and the washer and dryer. If the buyers wanted them, they could pay $10,000, a premium for secondhand Samsung appliances. That just seems petty. Like, that one, I feel like, just should have been worked into the contract, no? <laughs> and that's my audition for Selling Sunset. On the Upper West Side, a couple who lived in their co-op apartment for decades looked at the Cheryl Wagner sink where... Their now 52-year-old daughter learned to brush her teeth as a toddler and couldn't part with it? Sorry, no, that was an intentional moment of silence. Oh, my God. Listen, my dream of life is to have one of those Toto toilets that's like like $100 million. And it, like, opens and it has heated seats and it washes your butthole. If it could, you know, give it a little trim, that would be great as well. But I don't think that's going to happen. I would absolutely take that with me. Are you kidding? Those shits are like 15 grand. You ain't getting my toilet. But like the sink is a little crazy just because someone learned to brush their teeth in it. Like that's a weird flex. And also, do you have to learn to brush your teeth? (laughs) (laughs) Like I understand like, okay, this toilet is where they took their first shit. No, that's still fucking weird. (laughs) 
brushing your teeth is not a huge life event. Like, I understand keeping the carpet that they took their first steps on, even though I don't understand. Like, (laughs) I'm trying here. I don't get this shit. Except the toilet. I get that. It's like, I don't want to spend 15 grand again on a toilet. Like, cabinets are, like, fun because you're, like, cabinets. Anyways. Chris. Oh, my mom kept all my baby teeth. (laughs) So did my mom! I know, weird. She just recently parted with them, I hope. Would she 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 donate them? (laughs) Or would she do them? No, I think she tossed them. (laughs) Where did your mom keep them in? Uh, Like a little, (gasps) like, box. (laughs) Like a matchbox? Something like that, yeah. My mom kept them! So my, oh my, my mom also had um, bronze baby shoes. Same. <laughs> we, they should hang out. <laughs> oh my god! Wait, our parents would low key love each other. It sounds. I yeah. think they're Christmas ornaments now, and they always like pull down a huge chunk of a tree because they're <laughs> oh, bronze. The shoes. Yeah, <laughs> they're the most deranged things I've ever seen. Oh yeah. my god! It's so funny what our parents do, like out of just like tradition, I guess. Or they're mm. like, well, this is what parents do. Yeah. Now I'd be like, bronze shoes, bitch. I'll get you Jordans. <laughs> That'd be nice, though, if they got together and, like, hung out and they sort of, like, did, like, a show and tell. <gasps> memorabilia? <laughs> yeah. At first, yeah. I oh, was, maybe they could trade. Off the bat, I was like, I'm into this. Like, after 1.3 seconds, I was like, well, that could... Well, yeah, we're talking about literal bones here, so... <laughs> I don't know how that would play out, but... Oh, my God, that is so funny. I saw you talking, and I was like, oh, something's wrong with the camera. We're going to have to start this episode all over. And it was, honestly, that was I'm like all, the most. The, the bearer of bad news. It was like the most comforting thing you could have said. I was like, oh, my God, I thought it was only my mom who's mentally ill. <laughs> but no uh, one saves a sink. But what about the sink? Nobody saves a sink unless they're like the hoarder. The no, but that's what I'm saying. Who saves that, a yeah. sink? Especially in the reason is brush teeth. I understand it's like she was born in this sink. Keep the sink. Honestly, you should probably take the sink. It's disgusting to give that to somebody. Ugh, I don't know why I'm so bent out of shape over that, but I'm like, the fuck? Like, I'm such a sentimental person. I have, like, napkins from, like, high school drama club rap parties (laughs) with, like, grease on them. I couldn't even tell you what year they're from. Like, I understand a sink is impractical. It's impractical. And it's just stupid. The reason is not good. Neither was a fucking rap party for a high school play I couldn't tell you the name of, but it's a napkin, not a sink. Chill. Donnie, chill. Um, <clears throat> Tomp. Tomp? <laughs> Tom, Tomp, yeah! <laughs> Top talent departs Jeff Bezos' blue origin as NASA lander fight escalates. Thank you, MSNBC. Blue Origin has lost more than a dozen key leaders and top engineers this summer, with most leaving in the week's after founder Jess, Jeff, ugh, really thought reading was on the uptick. It's just kind of on the down, <laughs> downward. Um, Blue Origin has lost more than a dozen key leaders and top engineers this summer, with most leaving in the two weeks after founder Jeff Bezos' space flight. Two of the engineers, Nitin Aurora and Lauren Lyons, this week announced jobs at other space companies. Elon Musk, SpaceX, and Firefly Aerospace, respectively. I love the fucking tea in this industry. These, those who announced they were leaving Blue Origin did not specify why, but frustration with executive management and a slow bureaucratic structure is often cited in employee reviews on job site Glassdoor. Oh my God, Glassdoor is that big. Bitch, Ooh. if you don't know, I mean, I, I would assume a lot of people know, but I, if I talk to like any of my like internet friends, they would be like, what? Um, when I had like a real job, I would look on Glassdoor because I was trying to leave that job. <laughs> um, and oh my God, it's so, oh my God. The, we should explore Glassdoor. One, <gasps> exposing the biggest companies in the world. Write it down. Someone, it's coming. S- subscribe. Um <laughs> Oh my god, I live for Glassdoor. It is like the c***tiest, shadiest shit, but it's like so plain and simple and just matter of fact. It's wild. If you want to read into Glassdoor, whoo! A look at Glassdoor reveals a sharp disparity in employee satisfaction with Blue Origin's leadership when compared... Jeff Bezos? Not being a great leader? What? (laughs) After the space flight, Bezos gave everyone 10 grand in hopes to get them to stay. As a bonus. You just know his penis is shorter than an inch. You know. And I'm talking erect. That is deranged. Like, the fact that 
I could give people 10 grand bonuses is an issue, Jeff. <laughs> I almost called him Steve. <laughs> Regardless of your name, you fucking lunatic. 10 grand? Oh my God, I would have took it, taken it right out of his hands and kicked him in the one inch hard penis. I mean, fuck this guy, dude. Fuck. See, like, I, I'm going to be honest, the phrase, like, eat the rich and shit, like, I get it. I'm never, like, really in... Fucking knock this, knock his lights out, guys. Oh, my God. Ten grand? And you're... Ugh. I can't with Jeff Bezos. I just can't. Um, Okay, and somehow less ridiculous news. Kylie Jenner is pregnant with her second child, reports. And this is from HuffPost, but has been everywhere. People enter... Oh. It's been everywhere, including, if I would just shut up and fucking read, People Entertainment Tonight and Us Weekly reported on Friday that Jenner was pregnant again, citing sources. I love that idea. It's just like, could you as a journalist just make something up and say, I got it from a source? Like, right? Absolutely. No, There, there's actually been like a ton of journalists who've been exposed as to fully making up sources. How? But how did? How are they proven wrong then? Because the sources don't exist. Like when you actually go and research, like the quote and everything that comes from it, it always goes back to the article. Oh, There's I'm nothing obsessed. like. Oh, I'm fucking obsessed. Oh my god, that's crazy. <gasps> the news comes three years after the birth of her daughter Stormy. Stormy babies. Father is rapper Travis Scott. Jenner's on again, off again. Flame or. La Flame. You're welcome, HuffPost. If you need a writer, don't fucking come knocking on the door. I have no interest. He is rumored to be the father of baby number two. Fans have been speculating about... This is just such a funny fucking note card to be reading. Uh, fans have been speculating about Jenner being pregnant again on TikTok and Twitter, sharing comprehensive videos detailing their theories about the lengths the 24-year-old has gone to hide the news. I have seen some of those TikToks, and I have to say... Once again, I'm afraid of the internet. So scary. Holy fucking shit. Like, literally, people were, like, zooming in on nails and shit. It was crazy, and I did partake in sending those to friends. I'd be like, what the fuck? Um, I hope she names her other daughter Sunny, S-U-N-N-I. I saw that, like, on Twitter, and I was like, Stormy and Sunny? I would die. That's incredible. But, um, yeah. The world news, baby. <laughs> Uh, oh, I will say it's always so funny when there's like these reports and then they say nothing because when there's reports that are absolutely false, they are, they tweet, they Instagram, they everything across all social media platforms. They have a statement. When something is fucking true, they shut up because if they deny it, they can't. Oh, it's, it's wild. They're always the first people to like... I think it was reported wrong that, like, Chloe spent, like, the report said that, like, years ago, she spent, like, $5 million on her house. And Kris Jenner quote tweets and goes, wrong, $10 million. <laughs> What? Okay, no, fuck. Like, I don't think, <laughs> like, what the fuck? So that's why I'm like, I mean, just post the fucking ultrasound, bitch. Come on. Show us Sunny. Finally, and this is probably the most serious, no, I guess the COVID one, but. Fuck those people. Um, Variety saying OnlyFans will ban pornography starting in October, citing need to comply with financial partners. And this news really shook up my week. Shook it up so much, in fact, that Bella Thorne was a part of it. No, I'm kidding. She's done enough with OnlyFans. Um, OnlyFans, which has amassed a base of more than 130 million users, largely for adult-oriented subscription fan pages, announced that it will ban sexual explicit content this fall. The UK-based company said it's making the changes to comply with the requests of our banking partners and payout providers in a statement provided to Variety. Founded in 2016, OnlyFans said... It has paid out more than $5 billion to creators worldwide. Uh, according to its terms, the company keeps 20% of revenue generated by its 2 million plus creators. Um, top personalities with OnlyFans pages include Bad Baby, Cardi B, Jordan Woods, oh, Tyga, Amber Rose, Black China, Ruby Rose, Tana Mongo, and Trey Songs. Content creators took to social media to slam the ban, a move they say is OnlyFans cowardly bending to the extreme religious groups who have put extreme pressure on credit card companies. 
Hi, extreme religious groups. I don't think Jesus had a credit card, so why do you have one? <laughs> what are we doing here? I'm extremely saddened by this news because first I got my porn from classic Pornhub. That was amateur hour. Then I really discovered Tumblr. Mwah, gorgeous porn. Having porn in GIFs goes crazy. And then I only get my fuck like and then Tumblr did the whole like sold Yahoo bought it for a gajillion dollars and then four years later after ruining it and banning porn and nudity and shit sold it for like what four million dollars and now only fans I finally found a fucking comfort zone for my wank sessions Ugh, I'm so sad by this like <laughs> I'm well, like actually you don't have to be sad because they I won the OnlyFans factory. <laughs> <laughs> um, I have got the golden cum shot. <laughs> um, they announced this morning that they were um, temporarily suspending the ban on porn because of the public wow, pressure. I, so am I excited creators. by that or not? Um, so I, it's temporary? It's temporary. So, But they are going to ban it. Well... I think they... We don't know. We don't know. Um, it sounded like to me, based on the statements that creators were making, that... Yes, creators. The banks saw the public pressure and were just like, okay. I don't know why the banks care. They're making so much money. I mean, the banks care for the exact reason why, like, Pornhub, like, there's been financial stuff with Pornhub that's been happening. Oh, has there? And oh, then okay. The Shocking. I'm out of the loop. Um, only fans. Oh my God. Wait, this is so exciting. I will come to see another day. The, oh. ban, the ban was initially based on the fact that there's child pornography on only fans and they weren't censoring it or banning those creators. Oh yeah. That's a problem. That's a big problem. So banks don't want to be involved in that. Yeah, no, that adds up. I don't think I would want to be involved in that either. I could name a few people from past free-for-alls that I know would be into that. Um, but that's for a different day. I think it's time to move on from the free-for-all. And we are hitting the hot box, which you guys can call into at 310-844-6459. And you, I kind of give prompts on my Instagram stories and on the Unhinged with Chris Clemens Instagram stories. And this one was because of an activity we're playing later. I had this, uh, I had this be voicemails of... What, like stupid shit people regret buying, um, purchases in general, just like shit with money. Yeah. So let's, I'm excited for this. Oh my God, are there going to be crimes? No, oh, I think right. I also, <laughs> I think I did ask for crimes. That's I was for like, secrets, that's for later on. Oh, that was, <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, anyway. Anyways, Chris, stop talking. All right. Let's do it. Hi, Chris. Hi. Chris. Thank um, you. I watched your story and I, Never called in before, but I'm going to call. You wanted us to say Thank things that calling. we splurged on. Um, it's not necessarily a very big, expensive purchase, but it is expensive for me because I do not have a job. So about a week ago, I spent $50 on something called Vaginal Detox Pearls. Yes, I know you gross a lot of information, um, <laughs> but they're supposed to clean your whole, you know, you were an area out. It cleans your whole, you know. And it's been you know. hell, and I don't think I'm doing it right, and I think it's the worst money I've ever spent in my life. If it doesn't gross you out, you can look up what they are. It's supposed to be very beneficial for women, but yeah, that's the dumbest thing I've ever splurged on. Love you so much. Bye. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. That was, like, Six Flags can close. That was the only roller coaster I fucking needed. Oh, my God. First of all, there is no shame in what you consider a big purchase. There is like that. I'm s good for you, but also never mind based off of that story. So she got like a vaginal cleaner. Well, the first time I heard it, I thought she said vaginal detox pills, but just listening now, I, I thought she said pearls. Like what are Oh, they? it's probably pills then. Vaginal detox. Like you just stick them in. Pills. But then I thought of a pearl. I don't know. <laughs> I Maybe. A, oh my God. A pearl for your pearl. For, a pearl for your oyster. <laughs> no, I think it's just to reset your pH balance. <laughs> oh, right. Okay. Yeah. That's, that makes more sense. Yeah. <laughs> We're like, let's pills. put a pearl in my oyster. Um, can you like, if it's stinging, what was it? It was stinging? 
Something was there pain? She said she was doing it wrong. Doing it wrong. It just maybe not. I would right. like take it to the back to where you bought it and say this was defective and get a try and get a refund. You can get a refund for a lot more than you think you can. Like no, you can. No, it just seems like a hard thing to take back. <laughs> it does, but it's like, hi, this gave me health problems. I would like a refund or email the company and see if they'll send you money. But get your fifty dollars back, girl, and then find a new. I'm not going to give any advice. I know nothing, okay? <laughs> I don't know where I'm going with that. Somewhere, but... <laughs> uh, hey, Chris. Hey. So, the thing I bought that I regret buying was I was at a mall just minding my own business, and, of course, there was a man happens. at a kiosk with some sand from oh. the Dead Sea that he rubbed on my hands. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> That's the most mall kiosk thing. 20 minutes later and $400 later, I walked away with like potions and lotions that he told me I needed or else I'd look old. So I went home and cried to my boyfriend after that. So that was fun. Okay, bye. <laughs> I, I am sorry for your loss. I don't think I've ever heard of someone who's bought something from a mall kiosk. Like, I literally don't think I know anyone who has made a mall kiosk purchase. And you are my first at, at a price tag of $400 of Dead Sea Sand. <laughs> <laughs> I am so sorry to be laughing. I am so sorry to be laughing. But oh my fucking God. That's unreal. That's unreal! Like, is it good? I want to know. See, this is why we need, we need to work. We're going to work in a callback portion because we need answers to this. <gasps> Should we have a number that we just pick up any time during this show? Like a live number that people can literally, if they want to call in and see if we're recording? Do that. Oh, I need to stop planning while we're in the middle of a fucking episode. <laughs> people are like, hey, yeah, great. Could you have like, I don't know, a meeting about this later? <laughs> Not on my drive to work where I'm about to have a day of meetings. Um... Wow, I just can't believe four hundred dollars at a mall kiosk. Yeah, I mean that sounds like regret right from the start. I, that's one place I don't think you can make a return. <laughs> the kiosk is gone. <laughs> They're on to the next town. <laughs> Hi, Chris. Hi. Um, this is Max. Hi, Max. So, uh, something I regret buying. I am currently living in my childhood bedroom for the moment. Pandemic things. And I simply bought so many pins from Disneyland. Um, and this was the, into my 18th year, so I was a Disney adult for some time. Um, there's so simply sorry. hundreds of pins in this bedroom, um, including some that are, it's a small world themed that are kind of questionable. Um, so she said small world. Yeah, world. have a good one. <laughs> So the regret and money was all the pins? All the pins. Those, those shits are expensive. Oh, my God. I remember I went to Disney World and, like, they had just started the pin trading process or whatever the fuck it is. I, I mean, I don't, I didn't, like, I didn't have, like, a job or money at that point. So it was, like, fully, like, can I have this pin? And it was, like, no, Chris. You can't keep buying these pins. They're so expensive. And then I remember, like, Telling a hotel employee, I was like, I love your pin so much. I can't get any. And then he gave me. <laughs> oh, oh, my God. That happened to me. Well, I got a free one, a free like Disney enamel pen because the gift shop felt bad for me because I had lost my wallet. <laughs> ah! Oh, my God. All right. I think we have like a life hack. Really make Disney employees feel bad for you. No, yeah. they're already going through so much. They're like 24-7 like musical theater roles. Wow, yeah. How many pins did they say they had? Sorry, I was looking for what's going to be the rant, and I needed to pull it up on my phone. I think she said, like, hundreds of pins. Just a lot. Holy shit. Do you know how much fucking money that is? That's, it's like... shameful. At least okay. a grand, right? At oh, least. at least two. Oh, my God, are you kidding? Those things are, like, what, $15, $20? What? Uh, they're expensive. It's oh, the enamel one. It's, oh, it, it is no ordinary pin. Button. It is the enamel with gold <laughs> so, plating. Max stopped paying rent and just bought pins. Yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> literally, like, that's a month of rent of pins. Yeah. Oh, my God. Put those on eBay if you regret them. <gasps> I know bitches will scoop those up. Depop. Disney Depop. Depop the Disney. 
All right, I don't know what I'm doing here. Let's just keep going. <laughs> Um, hi, Chris. Um, I'm Amity. Um, hi, Amity. This is my story of what I regret buying. When I was like 13, 14, I inherited like loads of money from... Um, okay, inheritance. Member, and um, it was on my debit card. And at the time, I had this friend who was like really kind of rich. And she used to buy like loads of expensive makeup and stuff. And I kind of got pulled into this makeup world and oh my God, like, this is so well, uh... beauty influencers and I felt like I had to do the same thing so in the course of like half a year I spend I think a thousand euros on makeup and that's something I regret big time because now I have like all this expensive makeup and like what's 13 14 year old that doesn't even really use makeup it needs that much makeup awesome. so I guess that's my biggest regret I'm still working on using it all up <laughs> five years later. Isn't so, it expired? Yeah. Love you. I love your podcast. Love you. Um, Thank yeah, you. Bye. Bye. I also have a question. What 13 and 14 year old is wearing expensive me? What 13 and 14 year old has a fucking debit card? Oh, wait. Maybe I did. <laughs> I don't have any recollection of me like prior to like even 20 years old. Wow. I want to know how much the inheritance. <laughs> I'm such a fucking nosy bitch. Ugh. Call me Garcelle. I'm nosy. That's a Real Housewives. Whatever. I don't fucking. I, I need to stop bringing up the Real Housewives. It's like not a character trait I need or want. <laughs> it is just such a guilty pleasure. Do we have another? One more. Okay, last one. Hey, Chris. So wanted to tell you about some money that I did not need to spend, but I did. Love, I love this topic. Um, I was dating this guy earlier this year who was six foot seven. And for reference, I'm 5'11", so I was very excited to date someone like taller than me. And so I <laughs> I was very excited to date someone who I didn't need to kneel for to give head to. I previously wasn't wearing. I bought many pair of like three, four inch heels, like some chunky boots that just Anyways, he ended up being really horrible and toxic, and I broke up with him because he was, like, gaslighting, manipulating me. Oh. But now I have all these shoes that I, like, can't wear out because I only felt comfortable wearing them because he was freaking six seven. Anywho, <laughs> let me know if you think I should I, do something with the shoes. Sometimes I just wear them to the grocery store to, like, feel something. But, yes. Yeah. Um, okay. Love you. Bye, Chris. Love you. Bye. Um. Okay, I didn't put together that you got all these shoes for the height difference, I was just like, oh, date nights and looks. And <laughs> literally until the very end, I was like, oh, the height. Right, 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 right. I was busy making a head joke. Um, I say keep them. Fuck it. You clearly felt comfortable in them. You don't need some 6'11 loser to feel comfortable in sexy hot shoes. Bitch, go to the grocery store. Go to the grocery store for one apple. One in four inch shoes. I dare you. You're going to feel phenomenal. Maybe bring flip-flops for the drive home, though. I don't understand how people drive in heels. That seems... I can barely drive in, like, sneakers. <laughs> sneakers. <laughs> oh, are we having fun or what? Wow, I loved this. I'm trying to think of something that I regret buying that I spent a lot of money on. And I'm like, mm. <sighs> Oh, probably, like, a pair of shoes that I just, like... I, I was like, oh, I want them. And then I just never ended up... I don't know. I can't think of any off the top of my head. I know. I should have probably thought about it before stepping foot in here, but why did you guys expect anything else? Um, what was the last thing that you like returned? The last thing I returned... <laughs> probably stuff from a Target video that I just did with Andrew. Oh. <laughs> well, it was just like, I don't want to keep it. Like, I'm glad that he bought me it. It was fun for the video. But, like, there was some stuff I just didn't need, so I returned it. But I kept a lot of it, including the Nerf Fortnite gun. <laughs> oh, and I just got a notification that therapy is tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love how the universe works. Oopsies. Uh, it's me, which means I want to thank the sponsor of today's episode, which is Feels. Feels is a premium CBD that will help to keep your head clear and feel your best. It is hassle-free and delivered directly to your door. As somebody who has talked about CBD and the amazing effects it has on people like me with high anxiety, for example, it has been such a game changer. I even took some this morning. <laughs> now, CBD naturally helps reduce stress, anxiety, pain, and sleeplessness. There is no hangover 
or addiction. Another experience I've had with Feels is getting like one of the best nights of sleep ever. I took three of their little droplets as they recommended and I, I mean, I don't remember what the womb was like, but I feel like I've got a good idea after that night's sleep. I mean, <laughs> my nighttime routine has never been better. If you're unsure where to even start, Feels offers a free CBD hotline to help guide your personal experience so that you can find your perfect dose. And the Feels customer service team is dedicated to making sure that you get the best use of your CBD. Now, joining the Feels monthly membership makes your self-care easy. You'll save money on every order and you can pause or cancel at any time. Now, if you want to start feeling better with Feels, become a member today by going to feels.com slash unhinged and you will get 50% off your first order with free shipping. That is F-E-A-L-S dot com slash unhinged to become a member and get 50% automatically taken off your first order with free shipping. Again, it is feels.com slash unhinged. Thank you so much, Feels, and let's get back into the episode. Now we are moving on to the rant. And I just feel like a rant is always important for, you know, life. That's it, life. Um, And we have a timer behind me that has 420 on it. And that is kind of just like my guideline to be aware of. Chris, you've been a judgmental rude bitch for four minutes and 20 seconds. Just maybe wind it down. I've, I've stopped. I've given up like trying to say like, and that's the time limit because I just never follow it. But um, this was, so a lot of you guys were like wondering what happened. This isn't the rant, just for the record. Um, a lot of you guys were wondering what's been going on with the schedule of this podcast because we've skipped a few weeks. One of the weeks <laughs> we recorded, I don't know why, the day my great aunt died. And turns out, shocker, horrible episode. Um, maybe when we get the Patreon thing going, it'll be up there. But I'm only saying that because it's this, I'm reusing the rant but I'm bringing a new twist. I'm explaining something that's so far. Yeah, Chris, shut up. All right, we're going to start uh, in three, two, four, twenty. Um, So the rant is about Airbnb today. And I, so, I, yeah, I did this rant before and it was kind of a hot mess. I hate a Airbnb. Like, I don't hate it's like a love hate. Because when it first came out, I was like, this is the best. Fuck hotels. Like, this is so great. You can have a whole house to yourself. And then I don't know where, but somewhere along the lines, Airbnb got really high and mighty. Because it just feels like a bigger and bigger chore to stay in Airbnbs now. I don't know if this is relatable. I don't know if anything. But I stayed in one in... Portland during the pandemic, I just like wanted a change of scenery. I wanted to see fall leaves. So I literally got an Airbnb by myself. (laughs) Um, But it was amazing. But there was someone who lives underneath it. And that was not said anywhere. And they're like, you have to be quiet between the hours of the and I'm like, what? What? It's not like it was cheap either. That's what I don't get. And so I figured this would be the perfect time to bring up my favorite example of Airbnb and the reason that it is so hard for me to get Airbnbs because this is a review that is left permanently on (laughs) on my Airbnb profile. So uh, a few years ago, Andrew, Christine, and me went on a road trip, or and I, I'm so sorry, Um, Christine, Andrew, and I went on a road trip to Portland, Oregon, and we met up with our friend Ashlyn. And So we stayed in this house just over the border in Washington. But I want to keep in mind that weed is legal in Washington and Oregon. Period. So, (laughs) you know, we were super respectful-ish. Christine, I'm not trying to throw you under the bus, but you were smoking inside, which was like, fuck. Um, But I was smoking outside and stuff, and we really... We're respectful. We got a bunch of Lysol. We, like, made sure everything was nice, etc. So we leave. We clean up because that's what you have to fucking do even though you're paying a cleaning fee. Make that make sense. Um, so we leave and we get <laughs> this message. <laughs> <It was laughs> this is, like, drama. This message with a request for $500. Yes. It was disappointing to arrive at the home and find it in such an awful state. I was like, girl, you decorate it in head-to-toe IKEA furniture. It was already in a pretty iffy state to begin with. Airbnb is built off of trust, and we entrusted you and your group in our home only to arrive 
and find that several house rules were clearly broken and the home a mess. Here are some things we noticed as we went through the house, and they included pictures. Pictures. Which, honestly, I think hurt them in the long run. The entire home has a strong smell of cannabis. Christine. The smell is permeated in cushions, couches, pillows, etc. Red pillow downstairs has particles or cannabis leaves. White table and coffee table have black ash on them. White stuck white stuff stuck to coffee maker, unsure what it is. Ash covered paper towels in kitchen trash. Food stuck on fridge as well as overall cl- uncleanliness being shown throughout with crumbs, food, dirty napkins, etc. Dried mucus slash spit on front of TV. And mind you, mind you, this was like pre, 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 pre COVID. So we were never at the fucking Airbnb except to sleep. We were like in Portland. So we're like, what? I don't even think we use the TV. So that's why I was like, I'm sorry. <laughs> that sounds like you problem. Um, heavily soiled towels on bathroom floor upstairs with a strong smell of urine present. General uncleanliness on bathroom counter surfaces Toilet appears to have overflowed and had to be plunged as it was plugged when we arrived. Brown paper bag near window. Ash visible on desk in the green room. Dirty tissue with blood on floor and twin room. A lot of alcohol in refrigerator. Possible party could have occurred. Shut up, timer. I don't care. Um, possible party could have occurred. Like, this is some kind of fucking police report. <laughs> Dried up brown substance on carpet in room with twin beds, unable to remove substance thus far. Amount requested includes fees for breaking several house rules, additional cleaning time, and any ruined items. So, this was my response. And I was, okay, that sounds horrendous. Like, that sounds bad. I have saved every picture they sent with this. Okay, this is, oh shit, did I? Oh, if I didn't, I'm going to be so fucking pissed. <gasps> Here it is. Yeah, literally, like, there's a hair tie with hair on left on top of the toilet. Someone forgot their hair tie. There's, the vanity was a mess. It's from a coffee stain on tile. From a coffee cup. The fridge, food on fridge. It was a small streak of peanut butter from someone's hand opening the thing. The easiest paper towel cleaning of your life. It, like, yes, the smoke and the smell, I understand. 100%. Not to be insensitive, but I know that that smell goes away so fast and is so easy to fucking clean. So, Andrew, Christine, and I come up with this response. And honestly, I haven't revisited this. I've grown and learned since, so <laughs> I really should have pre-read this, but oh well. Hello. Come up. I was deeply hurt reading your message and seeing your photos. To start, 90% of the photos felt nitpicky and finding issues where there aren't. We lived at your wonderful home for four days. Yes, we might have missed a few things to clean up, and we are sorry for that, but thought we left it in a respectful condition for your cleaning crew. Peanut butter on fridge? That would be easier to wipe up than to photograph. We are... (laughs) Verbatim. We are four young 20-somethings. To hear about dirty towels which you asked us to leave on the floor, none of us have any idea what... Oh, one of the, like, toilets was plugged when we got there. So Andrew, I'm pretty sure it was in Andrew's bathroom, he peed, flushed, and it overflowed. So we used towels to clean it up. From the start, we texted them. Hi, we think the toilet when we got here was plugged. Like, we had to clean it all up. Um, to hear about dirty towels, uh, which you asked us to leave on the floor, none of us have any idea what you mean by urine stains, is frustrating. We did clog the toilets from simply using them, no overflow, and even bought a plunger because we didn't know you had one. Also, to see that you went through our trash is beyond violating and honestly inappropriate. I took edibles because there was a no smoking rule. I brought edibles ate them, put them in the trash in my bathroom, but put them under stuff so it did not look like we were disrespectful. They dug under, I'm pretty sure, sometimes. Chris, don't admit this. Um, Let me remind you, you open your home to guests. I suffer from extreme anxiety, which I 
medic, which is why I medically have cannabis. And I'm sorry that if that created a mess, I took the hit for Christine because I was not about to explain that my friend did that. We sat there and read the binder to make sure oh, the binder. They had a full binder of rules. It was like a Bible. Um, we all sat there and read the binder to make sure we were respectful and the checkout list twice as we were leaving to insinuate that we threw a party because of beer, us all being 21 plus and a stain on the coffee maker. We literally never saw until the photos is an angle. I won't understand, especially when it seems like you're assuming the white stuff on the coffee maker is cocaine. It was not. We left our cups and other food beer for future guests because we saw plenty of leftover food and items left for us, which we greatly appreciated. The mucus stain on the TV confuses me, seeing as how we didn't use it. And the stains on the countertops, they're bathroom countertops. Had I known we were to clean this down to the stain, we would have. But in all my experiences with Airbnb, this has never occurred. We will happily pay you $50 for a breeze, a pack of Clorox wipes, and a glass from Ikea. Oh, because we accidentally broke a glass from Ikea as anybody fucking does with any kind of glass. I will happily pay you $50 for Febreze, a pack of Clorox wipes, and a glass from Ikea, but $500 is unnecessary, Chris. I stand by that. What did they say? I don't know. We got into a huge war. This was, like, a long thing. I, like, had to, like, go through multiple, like, Airbnb phone hearings. (laughs) It was, like, wild. I was, like, they dug through our trash. They absolutely violated our privacy. Like, yes, my friend smoked in the house. In a state where it's le- like, it's not like we smoke crack. It's not like we did fucking, I mean, it just, it. I get it. But like, then just sit, make that the problem. The st- there's a crumb on the counter. Like the kitchen island, there was a picture with like one crumb. Oh my gosh. And they took a picture of it. Do you know how fucking easy that is to go into the trash can? We left extra cups because in the bag, still unused. We were like, oh, this would be a helpful thing in case someone fucking breaks a glass like we did. Do you think people still go to that area? I hope not. I still- responded. I like left the worst review. I was like, fuck y'all. Um, I got an Airbnb in Paris, France a couple years ago. And uh, I sat down on the toilet too hard and I broke the toilet seat in half. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, thunder ass. And I sent, a, I sent a photo to the woman who we rented it from. And uh, I was like, hey, like, let me know if you want me to pay for this. And she said, don't worry about it. <laughs> So oh, maybe maybe it's like an American thing. Great for you. That's <laughs> thank you so much, you fucking asshole. Comforting. Like, what the fuck was that? <laughs> she she said it was chill. Cool. I'm glad. Yeah, that's what mine said too in the end. Um, no, I did not end up paying the five hundred dollars. Um That's the thing. I would have been so I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry if it was just the weed thing, because that was the only thing done wrong. I was expecting, like, a crime scene. I was expecting... I was like, did they go into a different house? Like, like, I'm I'm really, like, anal about that kind of shit. And I fucking hate that word. But, like, I am so, like, paranoid about that shit. Oh, it makes me so mad. Anyways... It's, we need to move on to something more uplifting, which is the shout out for this podcast episode. And this one came from one of you guys. Uh, you can submit your own shout outs. No. Yeah, kind of. You can submit your own submissions. <laughs> Holy fuck. We're hitting the part of the episode. It's like the 3 p.m. equivalent to this episode. It's like, oh boy. Um, but you guys can submit your own shout outs. It could be for someone that you know. It can be for your community. It could be for people you don't know. It could be for something huge. Who knows? But there is a link in every episode's description that you can submit uh, GoFundMes or legitimate places to donate to. And this one, again, is from one of you guys. And it's on behalf of Tyrell Parrish. And it was submitted by his fiance. And she wrote, my fiance lost his arm two days after finding out I was pregnant. He needs a new arm. And we also need help getting us back on track. I also had a baby at 27 weeks since I got sick and was so stressed out. And uh, on the GoFundMe, it says Tyrell boarded a Greyhound bus to visit his family in Texas. And the bus was in a terrible accident involving multiple fatalities. Tyrell was airlifted to a local hospital where they had to amputate his dominant arm. Amidst tragedy and trauma, the mother delivered her baby 12 weeks early. The family is now home together and trying to navigate life with a new baby while unemployed and still recovering from the loss of a limb. Funds will go towards rent, heat slash electric, medical bills, food, and baby formula. And... Again, this isn't helping the world. It's but it I it's helping someone's world. And like that I think is such a cool thing that I'm able to do with having a following. So if we could all donate just 
a small amount. I think if everybody donated two to five dollars, that would change their entire life. And I think that that is a really cool opportunity that I don't want to take for granted. So Tyrell, we are thinking of you. Um, Oh, and I'm just seeing on the Google Doc that they are $4,000 away from their goal. So I think, oh my God, we could definitely do that, guys. Um, The link for that will be in the description of this episode as well. Um, So if you want to go donate to that, that would be really great. Or I think it would be good to come together. And, you know, even though this is a shit show, we're doing some good. I mean, like trying to at least. Um, but now it's time to get into the, uh, this is what I'm excited for. Okay. Not to switch gears too fast, but I have been, what's the phrase? Chomping at the bit. Yeah. Look at me. Worldly. Um, I have been chomping at the bit to motherfucking play this game. You know, those like, so when you watch like one of those, like Harper's Bazaar, cosmopolitan Buzzfeed videos and you're like, oh my God, I would love to be like famous and play those games. That's what I'm doing today. There's a, I think it's Cosmo does Cosmopolitan. Are those two different things? Doesn't matter. They have a video series called Expensive Taste Test and they have a cheap and inexpensive version of the same product. And I have to guess which one it is. And ah, I just live for playing this kind of shit. Oh my fucking God. I love it. Um, So that's what we're doing now. Oh my God. And we have wine. Ba-da-ba-ba-ba. I'm fucking wet. Um, okay, so we have two wines here in front of us. We have a vin- vinted in the golden state. What does that even mean, vinted? Is that like vine, vine minted? Anyways, um, we have California Roots and Large Soif Blanc. Oh my god, wait. I was going to say that this one was the expensive one, but then I saw this label. Okay, this is, are they the same kinds of wine? Is Soif Blanc Sauvignon? I don't know. Oh, so they're not even, the- okay. They should be similar. They're both white wines. Uh, I think one of the, I don't know what the other one is. All right. This one, this one bottle has like a clear glass. I've, I realize that I have to do like a description. I know Sam, you're like sweating over there. You're like, Chris, describe what you're fucking talking about. Um, this one bottle has a clear glass. I can see the wine color. Um, and the label looks very Trader joe Um, You know, like very Target, very like, you know. Caucasian. <laughs> like, it just looks Caucasian. Um, and then the other one, which I personally gravitate to, and this seems like a bottle of wine I would buy, which usually means it is one of the more expensive ones. Um, this has, like, what, a green glass? And, oh, the logo is, like, lime green and white. I might keep the logo. It's sick. Oh, my God. Um, Terra Vida Vinum. I mean, that sounds expensive compared to California Roots. <laughs> um... <laughs> Uh, all right, let me taste them. All right, I'm going to try the Sauvignon Blanc California Roots. <laughs> oh, I love wine. <laughs> okay, that one tasted like wine. <laughs> this is going to be brutal. Ooh, that one tastes expensive because I don't like it. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. Um, but fuck. But fuck. Um... I, how many of these do we have? Like eight? Like 10 or 10? Oh, I need to hurry up. Okay, got it. Um, I really have a feeling that the large soy if Blanc is the more expensive one. You got it. Yes! Oh my God, I'm, I get to keep it! Ah! <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, no, but for real, can we put lids on these so I can keep it? <laughs> oh my God, what is, is this cheese? Is this cheese? How many times have I talked about my lactose problem, guys? What are we doing here? Um, okay, so next up is cheese. And, oh, it looks like we have a Swiss. And we have a, honestly, this looks like vanilla fudge, but like candle wax. Oh, this is a, like a cheddar. This smells, oh my God, wow. Okay, so at one of my jobs, I always talk about this job, but I was like a dishwasher and a chicken fryer. But then like towards the end of the summer, they just were like, do anything. (laughs) And so I ended up grating a lot of blocks of cheese. And this, I would always sneak some. Mm, Fuck. Oh, my God. And I made the best roux there. Fuck. Oh, my God. Okay. All right. That one is cheddar. That's, yeah, that smells like ass. Holy (laughs) shit. Um... What the fuck is in here? 
No. There's brown in here. What is that? Is that supposed to be there? I think that... Can I tell him what it is? No? Oh, okay. Oh, oh, this is expensive shit, ain't it? Shit! <laughs> ah! I, no, I'm glad you told me, though, because I thought it was like a bug or something. Like, I was like... Like, I don't know if you can even see this. There is like a brown... Like, fucking... I don't... It looks like an ant or something. Like, lost his way. Yeah, but I, I know what you're saying. Yeah, do you? Or like a beetle shell crushed up? Ooh. Anyway, I'm going to eat it and be strong. That's truffle. That shit's expensive. This one's the expensive one. This one's the cheap. Yes, and they do say underneath now. Oh, oh my God. It. Work. Oh my. I can Did cheat Did you get now. it right? I can't. Yeah, I got it right. Wait, this truffle cheese? I know I'm going to regret this in, like, literally an hour. The truffle cheese is $34, and the other one is $12. It looks way less than $12. (laughs) This looks like plastic. Like, are we looking at this? That is, like, straight up, like, wax. Oh, my God. The truffle cheese. Oh, my fuck. I wish I never knew about that. (laughs) All right. Next up, we have... Two separate candies? Sour candy. Oh, they're sour candies? Okay, so we have... I think. What look like gummy worms. Are these smart, sweet gummy worms? Because they're right in the... <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm screaming. Um, So there's like this orange ribbon candy with granules on it. And then there's just like a gummy worm vibe. If we can see that. What is this dead thing? Oh, it's dust. Um, all right, I'm going to start with, like, the granulated sugar tape. Ooh. That tastes like throw up. No, <laughs> no, that actually, that's straight. The first, the, I put it in my mouth and it had, like, a, you know when you, like, open a new pair of shoes and some of the packaging smells very specific? It, it tasted like that smelled, but then it like got, we got into like a rhythm for like two seconds, and then it straight up tasted like vomit. Ugh. Mmm. Ooh. Now the gummy worm. Now the gummy worms. Mmm. Oh my god, I'm obsessed. I hope these. This is a tough one because I really like based off of taste. I would say the gummy worms are the more expensive ones. Wait. Are these some fancy-ass gummy worms, though? Like, what is this shit? Like, the reason I'm saying these ribbons could be more expensive is because, like, in the bag, this is clearly, like, feels, seems handmade, you know? But it also tastes like absolute shit. But I feel like gummy worms, it's hard to make look Nice, because it's supposed to look like a worm. You know? They taste really good, though. I'm going to say that the gummy worms were the expensive. No, Woo! you're wrong. Wait. B- that's not what the plate says. <laughs> that's, that's wrong. <laughs> no, you're wrong. Our staff messed up. <laughs> <laughs> you pull out a literal giant map of... <laughs> Those were smart sweets. You were right, actually. And uh, wait, they told <gasps> the only time I eat those gummy worm smart sweets are when I'm stoned <laughs> in bed at the end of the day, and they taste totally different sober <laughs> in the, the day. But the one you didn't like is actually more money. That's ten fifty. That's a waste of fucking and the money. Smart sweets three forty nine. <sighs> Fuck. So, are you keeping track of how many I get wrong and right? Sure. Elliot. Elliot. <laughs> Good. <laughs> Um, all right, the next thing we have are jade rollers. Is that what these are? Yes. <laughs> I don't know fucking anything about these. Um, right off the bat, I mean, they look identical, just like different colorways. Um, okay, so there's two jade rollers. The one of them is like has rose gold metal and then like is that classic pink rose quartz. Um, and they have literally the same big stone on one end and a little stone on the other with like a stone handle. Although this one looks like, oh, this one looks like acrylic in the handle meant to match the stone. That probably makes it more expensive, honestly. <laughs> um, this one, the purple one, though, has purple like jade rollers or whatever the fuck. I will say that the gold on this one looks cheap. 
And there's also an S112, which gives me, like, drugstore vibes. Um, I'm going to go with the pink one being the more... Oh, try it. No, I don't... Yeah, they feel the fucking same. I don't know. I mean, they honestly are the same. Just... I think... Except I think rose gold is so tacky. So, like, that gives me cheapo vibes. I think the pink one is the expensive one. And the purple one is the... Uh... Yeah. Uh... (laughs) See, okay, no. The only reason I'm saying that is because the acrylic handle and... Ooh, wait, this is a good idea. I'm just feeling how flimsy they are. Okay, yeah, I'm going to go with the pink one being the more expensive one. Incorrect. What? The pink one is $14.99 and the purple one is $24.99. I mean, there's like fucking words on it. <laughs> that is cheap shit. I mean, these were both made, here's the thing, in the same fucking factory, like in China probably. Um, Interesting. All right. Next, next up, we have two types of popcorn. Um, one of them just looks like virgin popcorn. Like white, nothing on it. Honestly, very uninteresting. This other one, however, definitely looks like a white cheddar or a butter kind of uh, popcorn. Oh, it's sweet smelling. All right, one of these, the one that's interesting smells like caramel or something. Oh, my God. It's really interesting. And then the other one literally is just ass popcorn. Um, Yeah, that is plain. That's plain motherfucking popcorn. And then the other one that smelled sweet. What is that taste? I know it. Coconut. Ew, I hate that. <laughs> That's exactly what it is. I'm not a coconut fan. I feel like this has to be like some kind of you're trying to throw me off that like the flavored one is going to be more expensive than this basic ass cardboard. I'm just going to I'm going to go with the coconut one be more expensive. Yeah, technically he's right. Technically, I, but yeah. they're the same. Yeah. <laughs> they're the same? Sorry, this was a bad But like five cents. <laughs> Who's having fun? You or me? (laughs) At least I was right. Okay, I'll take it. I'm sorry. What the fuck is... I'm sorry. Why do we have two shot glasses full of cum? (laughs) So these are both um, like day cream moisturizers. I am so glad. I really thought it was going to be like mayo and I almost took it. No, don't eat it. Um, So they're moisturizers for your face or hands? For your face. Oh, I don't want to put it on my face. You can already. put it on your hands. Okay. Um, I did just look at the bottom. Oh. Fuck. Hold on. Let me just scramble these. My eyes are closed. I don't remember what it was or what it looked like. <laughs> <laughs> Ready. Perfect. I truly could not. I could not. Wait, what? What did you guys do? I'm too insecure for this. You guys all can't be laughing at me after I just opened my eyes. Okay, so one of them is, like, very white. And one of them has, like, a a cummy color. (laughs) Uh, It's, like, a off-white. It's, like, a... How would you describe this? Eggshell. Is that eggshell? I thought eggshell was more white. It looks like tapioca pudding. All right, we're just getting off. I just almost wanted, like eat these um all right the first one i'm covering the bottom so i know not to look at it the first one the all white one oh okay i took way too much i don't want that much okay it feels very slimy um oh my god my mom uses this lotion this is the cheap one No, I'm not calling her cheap. (laughs) I mean, like, if the shoe fits, bitch. (laughs) Um, No, I know that this is the cheap one. Hands down, the white one. What does it say? I I don't know. I'm I'm giving benefit of the doubt to the other one. I'm like, I should... Ew, wait. Make sure you're smelling the right thing. Oh, that smells expensive. (laughs) Yeah, I'm going to say that this one is expensive. Oh, Oh my God, that... 
This is my mom's. Thank God you told me to smell them. Now I just have this shit all over my hands. No, my mom just doesn't, like, she's not into that. Like, she'll just buy, like, the cheap stuff from, like, the drugstore. That's all I meant. <laughs> Guys, leave me alone. Can you guess the prices? Guess the prices? What are we trying to do here? I, like, don't know the price of, like, an apple. <laughs> so the one that your mom used, I think, is, is the Jergens. Jergens is I didn't think the lower price Jergens one. Bitch. Maybe it's not hers. It's someone, though. Maybe it's Angie. I don't know. It doesn't fucking matter. Thank you so much for taking the cum glasses. What is this? Jerky? Mm -hmm. What are we doing here? Okay. Um, so right off the bat, I can't stop smelling this lotion. It's so bad. Ooh. I, like why I don't like scented lotion. It's just... Uh. Um, I mean, we all knew that that was coming. Um, so we have two beef jerkies. And I don't eat jerky. I just can't get over all this shit on my hands. Um, I don't eat jerky, so this is just wild to begin with. Um, on the first plate, there is two pieces, and they aren't in any sort of shape. It looks like they're just, like, organic shape. I don't fucking know. But the other one is in strips. That's why I'm like, okay, one of these has strips, and they're both, honestly, this... I don't know. It's fucking jerky. If you don't know what it looks like, Google it. I don't know why I'm explaining it. Oh, wow. Okay, so the one with strips almost just took out my front teeth. Wait, is this cow? Yeah, beef. Oh my god, I don't want to eat beef. Oh, spit it out. <laughs> All right, that was that one. Wait, 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 wait. They, they probably both are beef. Yeah, they're both. Yeah, yeah they're obviously fucking oh. both beef. I mean, thanks for telling me at this point. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all are fucked up. You're getting way too much enjoyment out of all of this. Um, I don't fucking honestly. I don't even care if I get this one wrong. I like. I'm going to go with this one being more expensive. The one that's not in strips. Fuck. Aww. Not that one. I mean this one in strips. Fuck. Ugh. Turns out I do care about losing that one. I don't know why. All right. Next up, we have two cups of bubbling brown juice. Um... Do we, can you, anybody tell me what these are? Can like, I tell them what it is? Is it like Coca Cola? Is it root beer? Yeah, it's root beer, but okay. we'll tell you. Yeah, no, I don't, I don't, I don't need to know. I just want to know what the fuck this is before I. No beef. <laughs> are we sure? <laughs> okay. That was, I mean, I'm not about to describe these. Sorry, listeners. Um, it's two, <laughs> picture two paper cups from your dentist office filled. Coca-Cola. That's exactly what it looks like. The second one. Ooh. God, these are both bad. Um, I'm going to say the, this one. I don't even know how to describe. Like, I'm going to say the one that I'm holding. <laughs> like, they're both fucking brown. I'm going to say that this one is the more expensive one. <gasps> I was right. It. Yeah, that had, like, definitely, what was that? This was, like, uh, A and B or... Yeah. B and R. What is a it? A and W. A and W. That's exactly. I, I tasted that. I was like, I haven't had that in years and I know what that is. And this one tasted like it was some like Whole Foods version of root beer. It's uh, Olipop. That's exactly what I thought it was. <laughs> <laughs> Olipop is uh, two seventy nine, and A and W is 67 cents. Oh, what? fuck. <laughs> Come on, Marka Bali. All right. Next up we have. What the fuck? <laughs> Are these dog toys? Okay, wow, these are both. Did you guys get tough chew ones? Because you know Bugger cannot handle Aww. a plush toy. She will surgery those bitches in 12 seconds. Wow, where did you guys go for these? Well, tell me after, because uh, I'm like, what? I heard that squeak, and I was like, Where's, where is she? <laughs> like, fully, like, trauma. Um, Okay, right off my first... Okay, so there's two dog toys. One of them is, like, this orange ShamWow bull... And it, like, has, like, oh, it's re it's cute. Like, I like this. It's really sick, honestly. It has squeaker toys in all appendages, head, and... Okay, so it's just one whole squeaker toy. And then the other one is this pink cow with, like, a hot pink lining. Or I guess that's purple. I think it's a pink. It's a purple. It's a purple and pink trimmed pig. <laughs> this, I have to say, is, like... <laughs> I don't know how to say this 
without it sounding just so off-putting. This is like the tightest little pig I've ever... <laughs> like, it's just so like... Like, this I think is for durable <laughs> chewers is what I'm saying. Like, I have not felt a chew toy that feels like this kind of Fort Knox vibes. Um, I, right off the bat, I guess my first impression is that the bull is more expensive just because I feel like these kinds of toys always end. Like, the cuter the toy is, the more expensive it is for some fucking reason. But, like, this one, I feel like do- will do a better job. But also, are these for the same chewing meter? <laughs> God, I've gone to too many pet stores because Booger goes through her shit so fast. Like, you know, like, it's one of these meant for really, like, intense chewers, and one of them's meant for, like, a Pomeranian. Anyone? No hints. <laughs> yeah, fuck no, y'all. No. Okay. Um, I'm too competitive for this. Like, I just want to win. Um, I'm going to go with my gut and say that the bull is the more expensive one. That is correct. Yes! Yay! Oh, my God. I was going to say, if I just, like, acted like I was that big of a dog chew toy professional and I get this <laughs> wrong, there goes my whole career. Next up. These are pillowcases. Pillow ca- oh, This is a good one. Ooh! We got two pillowcases. The first one... Oh, I guess I can put my rings back on since... Do we have any more cum lotion? <laughs> I think, oh. It's for after the episode. Oh, perfect. <laughs> it's for after. Um, all right, so we have two pillowcases. One of them is white, and one of them is, like, an off-white again. Like, literally the same color as the lotion. So whatever you pictured for that, um, picture it again. Um... The off-white one is linen, it seems. And <laughs> this other one is, like, one of those, like, jersey... Uh, what is it? Jersey? Uh, polyester? No, no, like, jersey. Like a jersey sheet. Yeah, jersey <laughs> sheet. Like I, mean, like, I don't know. The ones I bought freshman and sophomore and then junior year of college. Wow. And then also probably senior year. <laughs> uh, nope, senior year, for sure. They were white that year. Um, All right, the lining, the stitching on this one seems... Pretty good, honestly, on the white one. Um, oh, and there's a tag that you won't let me see, but it's 100% cotton, machine wash warm with like colors. Okay, pretty standard. This looks like a very basic pillowcase. Yeah, okay. And now we're going to go to the linen off-white one, which gives me like Target vibes for some reason. Um... Oh, the stitching on the inside is way nicer. Um, let me see the tag. Oh, the tag is made with nice material. I'm not cheating, but I'm just trying to read the the washing instructions. Um, machine wash cold. De- this one's more expensive. It's like a pain <laughs> in the ass to wash. This I'm going with the linen off white one. That is correct. Ba-bow! Yeah, this one just feels like basic. Oh, yeah, you were right. That The brand is that Room Essentials brand that's always, like, the dorm. Wait, this like, white one? Yeah, you were exactly right. Period. Oh, my God. Like, fully the jersey sheets that I had. <laughs> last one. <gasps> we're on the last one. And? Oh, my God. It's cho- chocolate. Um, We have two chocolate, two chocolate specimens in front of me. Um, One of them has bigger bars oh my god it has like a very fancy stamp i already have my guesses um oh but that could be like some cheap shit like we're fancy we put a stamp of a cocoa bean on here and then the other one has four smaller bricks like probably like half the size each brick is half the size of the other one and this okay the four the four bricks smells like Sorry, congestion. <laughs> um, the four bricks smell like basic chocolate bar. I mean, sort of the three. Fuck. Um, oh, I will say that the one with four is like slightly lighter, which gives me vibes that it's cheaper because there's more milk in there, if that's how that works. But I feel like that's how it would work. All right, I'm taking a bite out of the one with the cocoa bean stamp, which is the three brick. Oh my God, I literally lost a tooth of gum. Hmm. Oh, that's good as fuck. <laughs> Woo! Oh my God, wait, that is like so good. All right, now I'm going into the four bricker. Ooh. 
No bueno. It's like, ugh, Bob. Hate it. Wait, which means it's probably more expensive. I'm going to go with the three brick as the expensive. <laughs> it doesn't say. Oh, okay. <laughs> so I guess we'll never know. <laughs> Does this one say? Oh, no, I was wrong. The expensive one is ass. I was right. Damn. That's fucked up. Oh, but the size. I feel like expensive chocolates always have the smaller bricks. I'll hold a brick for you, daddy. Um, okay. Wow. How many I got right? That was it. All of them, Six. you said? That's so amazing. Six. Out of what? Ten? Eleven. Yeah, that's <laughs> that's a pretty familiar <laughs> testing score to me. Um, all right, we're going to move on. Oh, can I have that wine, please? Mm, thank you. I'm going to take the, the Blanc. Um, now, before we wrap up this episode, we have the secrets. <gasps> oh, my God. You can't. Ooh, ooh. I'm here with some secrets. I did not approve the laughs, just for the record. <laughs> what in the deranged mess is this? Oh, wait, I mean, the other one. <laughs> if you aren't watching this episode, you are going to want to. I just had a dead owl thrown at me as I have a bottle of wine in hand. And... <laughs> <laughs> and laughter has been added to an already deranged sound effect. Um, this is the part of the episode where you guys can submit your secrets that you've never admitted to anybody, and you can sit, submit them anonymously. We're not trying to, like, put you on blast. Um, but then my team prints them out, and I have no idea what they are, and I reveal them here. What? <laughs> A long-winded explanation. Um, okay. Ooh. Oh, so this these I asked for anything what you stole. Oh my god. See, okay, you guys have proven to be maniacs. So I'm gonna lean in instead of trying playing bad cop. Was that a sentence? I don't know. I was just focused on the chocolate in my mouth. Um, but I did ask you guys <laughs> anything that you stole in, or like what was it? Most expensive thing you've stolen? Anyways, we're gonna we're gonna find out what these are right now just get the biggest one out of the way um okay i didn't technically steal this well maybe i did if you have to question if you stole it you probably did but i went to a garage sale and saw this jewelry box for sale i was honestly probably 15 or 16 at the time when i opened it there was these diamond earrings in there i said absolutely nothing and bought the jewelry box i went home and did the test where you scratch the mirror and they just so happened to be real I still have this to the... I, hello, Chris? <laughs> Thank you for the thumbs up of... <laughs> <laughs> wow, we all heard this plane crashing. I went home and did the test where you scratch the mirror and they just so happen to be real. I still have them to this day. They're about half a carat each and I wear them for special occasions and always <laughs> get asked where I get them from. It's always the shit you steal that people are like, where'd you get it? <laughs> <laughs> Not that like... Mm hmm. Just trying the Blanc. Um, all right. I, I mean, I don't feel like that's stealing. I get 15 or 16. It's like, that's just being an entrepreneur. Next up, I stole a Gucci belt from a guy I had a one night stand with. Wow. And this is why I'm so scared of one night stands. The belt didn't even fit my thick waist, but the sex was trash. And right after he finished, he made a comment about my weight. So bad manners, bad dick, no Gucci belt for you, sir. <laughs> Honestly, that is a motherfucking word to live by. I guess that was technically words, plural. Um, Yeah, I don't... That's good for you. Get it. After I learned about hobbies... Start over, Chris. After I learned about Hobby Lobby's homophobia and excessive religion shift... Start over part two. After I learned about the hobby... <laughs> Yeah, this is the more remix than what is that song? Old Town Road. <sighs> it's surprising how I forgot it. Am I? 
Is this like a sign that we should just cut it short and be like, thank you all for watching. Thank you. Get the laughter going. Come on. Um, after I learned about Hobby Lobby's homophobia and excessive religion shit, I filled up my cart with all the art supplies my heart desires and walked out of there. I don't know if it, it's because I acted like I was supposed to do that or their policies, but nobody said a word, LOL. <laughs> what? We need a callback section. This is, oh, wait, but these are secrets. We have to, like, put your phone number so we can ask questions, find your identity, ask you what Hobby Lobby so I can test this out. But it's not anonymous. I know it's anonymous, but I don't want it to be. I want it to be non-anonymous. Non-anonymous. <laughs> that honestly makes sense to me. There are far less sense-making words in the English language. Let that be fucking clear. Next up, when I was in high school, my best friend at the time was having problems with her boyfriend. Later, we found out that he was cheating, so I snuck over to his house at 2 a.m. and super glued the gas cap on his car so he couldn't fill it up to go fuck other bitches. That is iconic, and I will root for that because I don't even have a gas tank for people to do that to, so gra. Love this. I don't know why I'm paranoid of all of these happening to me if I endorse them. <laughs> I love that. That's iconic. I don't know why I've never heard of that. Especially, like, on TikTok. I feel like I would have heard of it by now. Some of you guys should do, like, TikToks about these. <laughs> I sound like my mom. <laughs> I know I'm, like, grilling my mom, but, like, I would, like, she and I joke about this. She's like, you should do a video where? And I'm like, okay. And she's like, I don't know why I'm giving advice. I'm like, it's okay, mom. <laughs> We're all just doing our best. Um, I used to work at Walmart and I could never remember the vegetable codes, so I just pretended to ring them up and then gave them to people for free. What? A superhero. Like, literally not all heroes wear capes. They wear Walmart aprons. That is everything. Oh my god. Why do I want to be a cashier now and, like, just do that? And then what? They fire me? Okay. <laughs> I am famous. <laughs> No, I'm not at all. <laughs> I would unveil my mask and they'd be like, who are you? <laughs> I'd be like, your worst nightmare. Undercover boss. On, on, undercover checkout boy. Let's pitch it. I went to a party once and got absolutely wasted and my drunk ass stole this kid's family pictures and I'm embarrassed to give them back. Have This might be the second example of this we've had. Um. I don't know if it's the second example of this that we've had, but John Mulaney told a story where a friend of his would do that when everybody got drunk and, quote, because it's the one thing you can't replace. Oh, I think I've seen that video or some. Yeah. Oh, my God. So did he start a whole wave of this shit? Yikes. Of, like, familial kleptomania? <laughs> That's wild. This is, like... Oh my god, is this a thing? This is why I don't want to have people over at my house for a party. Sounds like a nightmare. I need my family photos. <laughs> um, lastly, the last secret, which is what lastly means, in case you were confused. Every time I hook up with a man who doesn't make me finish, I steal handfuls of their weed. I think that's only fair. Right? Oh my god. If you didn't make me come, give me some kush. Anyways, I guess that's a... Lovely sentence to end on. Thank you all for another episode of this fucking shit show. Um, if you want to catch the next one, you can subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts. And again, the video portions are on... No, not portions. It's the same fucking portion size, bitch. It's the whole episode. You can find the whole episode video... Whatever. On my YouTube. YouTube.com slash gross. I need to wrap this show up. Leave a review. Give me a hug. I don't fucking care. No, that was a little creepy. I rescind that one. I don't want to hug anyway. Um, alrighty, I'm gonna go eat food. That isn't fucking beef jerky, guys. What the hell was that? For real? Beef cheese and then beef jerky? Okay, so I guess I'm taking an ambulance home. 